All right, we all have an opportunity now to get into the tool itself. Um, and one of the things that we try, have been trying to do, and that we're going to try to do again next semester, um, as I was saying with Canvas, uh, the Canvas theme is, we are now trying to put everything that we do uh, the last half of the semester, how does it work in Canvas? So we actually kind of figured out how to create a lesson and embed it in Canvas as Storm content, which is a phrase that I didn't even know what that meant until Tuesday. So um, you should all be, have gotten an invitation to a Canvas course if you haven't already. And on the front page of that, you should have an access to a quick little balloon safety lesson that I put together. And so you can see what that looks like in Canvas. And there are other ways to do this in Canvas as well that luckily we have much to talk about. Uh, yes. Is I haven't done much with that. Um, you, well, you get it to the and, and it works on Macs yeah. and Windows and it might even work on your iPad. I don't know. How, how, much is, how, much how much is it? How much is it? Four, I didn't even look at the cost. I think it was $5.99. It worked. Yeah. For yeah. your different yeah. 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 So, and that was just me looking once, so it's hard for me to be confident. And what is it? Educational discount? Um, that is the, I think without the education, it's not I had to write a code to make it possible. And each individual department would have to purchase this, or is it something that we could go I don't know on that answer. I'm sure there's an institutional setup versus an individual mm -hmm. Yeah. Can, can you pull uh, old school storyline files into 360? I see some nods of affirmation. Into 360? <laughs> into uh, the 360 Rise, the new web based version? No. Like the answer is no. Yeah. no. You can into Storyline 360, which is the new desktop version. Right, they, so they have a new Windows version as well of Storyline that um, is Windows based, that yes, yeah, makes sense. and that makes sense. So Rise is a totally different tool. It seems like I have no experience with either. Is that what you use to make this? The balloon thing, I use Rise, uh, 360, yeah, 360 Rise. I thought it was super fun. <laughs> Yeah, so the two things that are in Canvas, the first one is ju you just use the graphic, right? The interactive graphic? Interactive graphic, yep. And I guess, uh, is, oh, and drag and drop. And then drag and drop, and then the car, yeah, the car is drag and drop. Right, and then the second one, the one that's called try too, because I <coughs> just go around and that's how I label things, uses the custom blocks. So if you're looking at your activity sheet, the, one of the first activities to use the pre-built ones, lessons, and then the second one is to use the custom blocks. So the try to is made with custom blocks. The first one is with a couple of different pre-built ones. And the try to is content irrelevant because I was just using it, just building it here. <laughs> made no changes to content. Amy, are you able to access that on your phone and make it work there? Yeah, I looked at it on the phone. So the, awesome, so the, the, it works well. And I don't know how articulate yeah, so the storyline work. yeah. worked as, as a flexible, oh, did it have flexible format? Video that they have, they're like responsive, responsive design, yeah, so oh. then it worked yeah, on mobile devices. Yeah, it's going to look good, yes. Yes. So it's articulate every single time. time. Yeah. 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 So it comes to that as HTML5. Okay. So good this flexibility. Okay. Well, I would say that Storyline's responsiveness gets improved in Storyline 360. And I say this is not being a Storyline expert, but that's one of the things they're touting is, it is. 360's yeah. kind of like buy 360 because it has better responsive behavior. Great.
Campus. Campus. It should just be called Active Teaching Lab, right? I think he's called it John's Sandbox. Oh, that's John's Sandbox. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know you're in it, right? Yeah, you're in it. There's like a He has it set as an unrated assignment, so perhaps that's all. You set yours as a score map? They're both scores. They're both scores. Yeah. 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 This shows up way better than like your average old school art So that's like, yeah. This is a big one. So. <laughs> I don't want to complicate it, but complicated. I, no, I mean, <laughs> didn't quite yet. But the way this looks, it must be published in HTML5 or the Rise mm -hmm. version. Yes, looks very different than what the old. I remember seeing what you. And you that I had yeah. to like. Can you bring yours up actually and then and fix it? <laughs> <laughs> Aww. But, well, it's so, it right? tells us who went through course and her context. Oh. I don't know. Right. I've got my hand. Yeah. Yep. So I don't think but she cared, but I didn't ask her. Right. Something you can say without demo. Right. Yeah. I just made that stuff up, and actually the cold, the thin air stuff is <laughs> probably the opposite of what it actually is. I love those flashcards and what's <laughs> safe and what's not safe for a balloon. <laughs>
But did you set yours up to report out? That's what I'm really No, curious. would you like me to set one up for graded? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm very curious about. A couple of seconds here. That's where, that's where I worry. Do you have to, uh, if you make changes in the cloud, right. does it change it in the course? You know, I, I wanted to try that, and I never got sure, sure to time. You. And I wonder if it's we'll find out. All right, I just added it, so if you maybe refresh or something. It's probably, it's probably, if you just go to the assignments page. I'm glad you came with it. My guess, Virginia, uh, yeah. My guess is no, because you have to download it from 360 and then upload it into. But do you think it'll change? Yes, you do create. Rise. All right, well, I can change something. What should I change for you? Open this up up here. I don't, this one's just, yeah, I mean, like you said, I don't change any of the It is pretty, I like it. So this is Cheryl. I downloading I'll say they are. Well, but check this one out. I added up. I'm going to try to do it. Yeah. Let's see if I can make a paper. Let's open this up to a discussion at this point because I think we've got some some people who can't have to sit or mobile devices. Nate, I'm interested. Are you able to get into the editing tool with that? Um, I all right. No, it does not. But you were able to get at least into the. So then you have yeah, to download the file and sure, then upload it, it again. That, so it's not it wouldn't let me hyperlink in that quit. Oh, so okay. I'm going to figure yeah. out something else to change. Um, but there are other issues. So, as with any tool, we are finding that there are um, hidden little perks and issues, and it's not really promising um, or delivering on what it promises, right? Uh, and I think that that's almost always the case. But, so you guys have played with it now for three minutes, <laughs> and you are now experts in it because you've already, and you can talk about it. I, I'd really love to hear you share what your thoughts are with Articulate Storyline Rise versus Articulate Storyline, um, the Windows version that you're already using. I think it's hard, for me, it's just hard to switch like the whole control panel. Okay. Three minutes, my brain can't do that quite yet. But um, I mean, I think the power is still there. Of the, the quizzing capability is still there. Um, and if you use a Mac, you can actually use it. So right. I'm not a student, so I wake up. So you can't work. But so I want to be able to bring my old storyline files in, story files, and a long list, mm -hmm. and somehow import them into oh, the right. system mm -hmm. so I don't have to use my old cast up. You'll see. Have any of you used Case Scenario Builder? We're facing the same issue right now with a another software package that we've got all this great content in, and now it doesn't work on the mobile devices or on in Canvas very well. What do we do about that? How do we get all this old stuff back in? I think this is a perennial, a pervasive issue with just about anything. Um, so how do we approach that? I just, I made new, I used my CSCR templates and I made them articulate. That's oh. how I did that, which was a 
time to make those worth it. Now it's pretty, and they're hopefully for at least five years. So, right. And this is, I think this is a great approach. You know, you, you start thinking, how can I make this more modular? Like, slide by slide, what does this slide look like? How do I recreate it in any number of tools? If I have that same content sort of figured out conceptually, then moving it from tool to tool is a pain in the butt, but it's not as much of a pain in the butt as coming in totally different. Right. Uh, that's what I'm looking for, paradigm yeah. of like, something entirely different. At least we have like the slide format. Yeah. And the, you know, the, the power thing. of articulating whatever product, I think is the branching. You can send your students in different places depending on what they answer, and right. that's really the power of it. And setting that up, getting that tree, that's the hard part. Right. The, me the mechanics of making the slide, that's just making the slide. But getting the logic down, and once that's good, it's not so bad. Once you have a handle on the tools, you know, it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts, questions, ideas? Yes, Link. Maybe you discuss this. Uh, no. What are some of the pros and cons differences between articulate and captivate more? Did we discuss that a lot? We have not discussed the differences between articulate and captivate here. I am an expert in either of them. So let me open that up to the group. Well, our group found um, that the three of us do articulate a lot. And we liked it more because Captivate has a lot of options that you can do, but it's almost like there's too many of them. Um, so Articulate's formatted, just, it's set up, it's formatted more like PowerPoint, which is pretty you know, easy to use, but um, Captivate is more like uh, Photoshop, which is too, too much. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. too much for me. So that's why I like Articulate a lot more. And I, see, I saw a couple of other nods there as well, as you were saying that, of, of agreement there. Output's the same, um, reliability across browser, similar. That I don't know. I don't think we've had any browser issues. Yeah, we've never had any There's a couple of advantages to Captivate. It is, um, at least at this point, it's a Canvas supported right. tool, so it's right. super cheap. It's basically yeah. free. You articulate storyline is, at this point, I don't even know. Like, I don't know what I don't know what this product is. The old storyline or Articulate storyline two is about fifteen hundred bucks. So mm -hmm. It's super pricey. You can Captivate. Um, you can get free training through Linda.com for any of those tools because we have a campus subscription, so just want to point that out. Um, Captivate does better for um, with closed captioning. Articulate mm -hmm. Storyline, you have to do more. Um, Articulate at least has some built-in functionality for that. Mm -hmm. Captivate does. Captivate yeah. does, yeah. You can do it in Articulate, but it's more messy, okay. more work. No trivial for capta, closed captioning file, files. Yeah, you can actually, there's a, a, in the interface, you can actually kind of do it as you go. You can oh, okay. import the notes, whereas I feel like you have to do it, it's a few more steps. Okay. And that was a question that Todd, um, I mean, the last one, Todd from McBurney Center mm -hmm. had asked about as well. Um, he was wondering if, there, if the Articulate 360 Rise product or the, the 360 product had gotten better than Articulate, and I did not have an answer for him. Mm -hmm. um, haven't played him to it for three days now. Transition over for the first year for 300 bucks, and then the price goes up. Once they have it, it's a lot, but it's less than 1500. It is. Right, because our people in story like it was just buy it, you have it, right? And that is the Yeah. Or maybe Google will come on next week with a new tool that does all this for free. It does. They are good on the customer page all the time. Other thoughts? Other tools that people have used? For branching? Yeah, see, I put here's the change in front of my own names. So it does not auto update. And you, yes, Lane? Eyes lows. But eyes and lows, what's the best part about it? What's the worst part about it? 
Of Articulate Storyline yeah. in Windows. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic because we've got unlimited possibilities for quizzing or narrating PowerPoints and mixing it all together seamlessly. And it's worst. fantastic. Worst part. Um, learning curve. Learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. It's time for yeah. But it's, it's totally worth it. And when you build really interactive things, the students go wild for it. They love it. It's totally worth it. So did you bring you using teacher one? Uh, we are in Because when I did it, so I did one two, two and a half years ago. So I don't know how long you took to guess about this thing. And when I first started trying to pull them up into learning at UW, they, they said to me, oh, you like more articulate. Instructor presence. How do you do good instructor presence in an interactive slideshow with quizzes and such? When you have the talk lecture capture the talking head, at least you've got you know the talking head there, and they can see when the person is excited or not excited. And if you have a voice, you can hear a little bit of that. But on, on some interactive things, without without an instructor. Do the students feel like they're being taught by you know, a, mach a machine? Is it a and, and how do you how do you overcome that? 
what are some ideas and thoughts on, on that? Because they don't, it's not just, education is not just about content transfer, right? It's not just about learning how to do skills. It's that idea of like, I'm going to become somebody. I'm going to be a professional in this field. So how do you inspire them to, to do that? All our courses, none of our courses are purely online. We have anatomy labs with them, so we get FaceTime with them okay. in that venue. So even if they're going through you know, a totally voiceless exercise that was built and articulate, they can have, for better or worse, some vision of us having created with it and I think interacting with us because they have met us and worked with us face to face too. I think the flip side of that too is we are always wondering what question is in their head. Oh, yeah. That's so hard. You have to think of the 900 different questions you can get about this concept on one slide. That's just a killer. Are there ways for you to get formative feedback as they go through that? Other or than it's just more transferring what we do face to face to this interactive online thing. Yeah. yeah. But that's a real, that loss of personal mm -hmm. is hard. That's the challenge. Sure. I'm taking the, uh, that one of the course to continuing education, creating an online presence. Yeah. And one of the things that we're doing tonight, as a matter of fact, we have free range time and we use Zoom, and then we all interact with everybody in the class. And it's like people from Australia, uh, all over the place. It's, it's really great. Mm -hmm. It's a good experience, and then we have break into groups and do projects, and share a group of documents. And it's really quite engaging. <laughs> you guys tried online office hours with Ultra or Blackboard Collaborate, yeah. Yeah. not a big update. <laughs> we yeah. had four students out of a 700 student mm -hmm. class mm -hmm. come to our online mm -hmm. office hours. I was there for one. Over the entire class. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, with online office hours, I don't see that as much different as face-to-face. -face. I never had a student come to my face-to-face -face ones either. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, I don't yeah. think that's much different. different. But going back to creating the presence with, like, an interactive uh, software thing, another thing from that class that Simone has done is embed a Padlet mid-interactive learning content. Um, and it was to share thoughts, or it could be for something like ask a question right now on where you're at. Uh, so, you know, something like that, perhaps, that's intermittent. What's a Padlet? Sorry. I didn't yeah, no, that's session. no problem. <laughs> well, on the one hand, you can go to the Active Teaching Lab e-journal and find out how to use Padlet. Um, but basically, it's like a digital uh, pinboard. pinboard, thank you, is the word I was looking for. Yeah, and so it can be embedded right into, you know, a, a lesson or something like that. Um, now, I don't know about specifically RISE. I'd have to think about that. So and I think this is a really interesting point, that it, it's not necessarily just instructor content and instructor personality, but the other students that are taking the class, yeah. too. Being able to get their input, I think, also mm -hmm. broadens and enriches the, um, the learning. So we use Padlet a lot in our online course. Mm -hmm. um, and my TAs, actually, they just to try and build community in the face class, they always have, they start their labs with, uh, you know, um, how are you going to make a difference in the world, kind of just to get people to share. We actually implemented that using Padlet mm -hmm. in the online version. So it's nothing at all related to the course itself. It's just an opportunity mm -hmm. for students to get to know each other. And they just post their little thoughts as, as little, I mean, it takes two seconds mm -hmm. to do it, but they post these little thoughts on the Padlet and it creates this um, little almost like scrapbook of, yeah. of thoughts, which is really cool. And I think the students like that. I use Padlet a lot. I highly recommend that, mm -hmm. that software. If you like Padlet, check out TriSight or Industrial as well. Yeah. But you, you can give the student feedback of the quizzes, for example, with your voice, yeah? In articulate yeah, yeah. a question, mm -hmm. if they're going in the software. Yeah, yeah that's so it's a strong that's true. sense of presence. Mm -hmm. All right.